Let's memorize some chemistry functional groups. Ether and amine. Their naming functions are similar because a root is going to be ether or amine. And then in front of it, you would add the alkyl group that is on the left of the amine or ether and the alkyl group that is on the right of the amine or ether. And you would do that in alphabetical order. And if the thing on the right and the left is the same thing, you would just write di or tri alkyl group and then ether or amine. The only difference between these two are that ethers have a space in between all of these names. So it would be dimethyl space ether, but it would be methylamine without space. Aldehyde and carboxylic acids. They are they both have carbonyl, um, but carboxylic acid also has the single bonded O from ether. Because aldehyde and carboxylic acid, if you take away the H, it's going to lead you to a ketone or an ester. That's why aldehyde and carboxylic acids have similar naming systems. So the root word for aldehyde is going to be aldehyde. And the root naming for carboxylic acid is going to be the acid. Now the prefixes will be similar. It'll be form if it's just the uh, the functional group by itself, which means on the other side you would add an H. That would be the form prefix. The ast prefix will be if there is the first methyl group bonded to the other side of this functional group, such as aldehyde, for as astaldehyde, or acetic acid. And of course, benz just means benzene, benzaldehyde, benzoic acid. Now, if you take away the H on aldehyde, it'll give you a ketone. Ketone is just aldehyde, sorry. Ketone is just like the carbonyl of aldehyde, but inside a carbon chain. Um, acetone and ethyl methyl ketone, which is kind of similar to the ether naming function. And as for ester, the root word is acetate, which makes sense because carboxylic acid, take away one H, becomes acetate. If that sounds familiar. As acetic acid, one less H, becomes acetate. So that's how they are connected. Naming function for this is you would add the alkyl branch plus the acetate name behind it. Um, and yes, there is a space. So, so far, the only thing that has no space is amine between the naming function. Um, quick note, ester and ether sounds really similar, but ester has a carbonyl group plus the single bonded oxygen from the ether. So ester is a fancier version of ether with a carbonyl group. When you combine an ester and an amine, you get an amide which makes sense given the root word is acete, acete from the ester, and amide, which sounds like the cousin of amine. The amide naming function has a root of acetamide, which is when the lone pair nitrogen is bonded to two H's. That's your standard name. If you say, if a question asks you what is an acetamide, you would draw, um, you would draw something like this. And on that side, it's going to be like uh, uh, methyl, okay? But if these H's get substituted by any group, let's say methyl, you will need to name it as dimethyl. But of course, you only use di if both of those substituted groups are the same. And make sure to write n, comma, n dash, which shows that it's being substituted on the N, okay? Lastly, nitrile. Nitrile, you would just have the regular alkyl group in front of the word nitrile, and there is no space, just like, just like amine. So, so far, the two only thing 
The only two things we have no space is amine and nitrile. Everyone else has a space, which is easy. Nitrile, propene, nitrile. But if you see a cyclo compound bonded to a CN, you would write a cyclo compound. But instead of nitrile, you will add carbon nitrile. So I hope that was helpful.